Happy Fall, East Texas, at least meteorologically speaking, happy fall. The 1st of September does mark the changing of meteorological seasons from summer to fall. And so just doing a kind of review of where we've been as we moved through the summer and then how things look as we're moving into the fall season again. This is meteorologically speaking as those seasons are based on months and not so much the sun, moon, and stars as the astronomical seasons are. So uh, just review of the summer, where we kind of were for June, July, and August. For Tyler, it was the second warmest summer on record. Longview was the fifth warmest summer on record. And for Lufkin, it was the number one warmest summer on record at the Andrew. Angelina County Airport. In Tyler, we had 38 100 degree plus days, 31 in Longview, and 42 in Lufkin. As far as 105 degree or warmer days, 21 of those in Tyler, 17 in Longview, and 22 in Lufkin. It was the sixth driest summer in Tyler, the 39th driest summer in Longview, and the 12th driest in Lufkin. You may remember in June, Lufkin got quite a bit of rain areas north and east of Longview as well. Got quite a bit of rain with a uh, multiple rounds of showers and thunderstorms, some of which did quite a bit of damage. That's why Longview, it wasn't quite as dry for the summer season. And then something else noteworthy that happened this summer on the 27th of August, just a few days ago, Lufkin hit an all-time record high temperature. The previous record was 110 degrees, set in 1909, tied in 2000, and again, just a week prior in 2023. But last Sunday on August the 27th, Lufkin hit 111 degrees, breaking that all-time record high. Just for reference, Tyler's all-time record high, 110 degrees, and in Lufkin, the all-time record high, 113 degrees. So looking at rainfall through the uh, summer and then months to date and everything, uh, through August, Tyler, really rainfall not looking all that great. We should have had over two and a half inches. We only got about three uh, tenths of an inch there. And then in uh, uh, the season to date rainfall, the summer rainfall not looking good there either. And then year to date rainfall, pretty much the same situation. In Longview at the East Texas Regional Airport, month to date not quite as bad, about an inch or so shy. Season to date only about two inches shy. Again, quite a bit of rain in uh, the Longview area in June. And then year to date rainfall not quite as bad either, maybe an inch and a half or so off on that year to date. Then in Lufkin at the Angelina County Airport, about two inches shy on the month to date rainfall. Season to date rainfall not looking good there. But year to date rainfall only about two or so inches off from that. So tie Tyler, as far as the rainfall is concerned, is the city that is not doing the best when it comes to the month today, season today, and year today. Angelina County, the Lufkin area, year today looking a little better, but the uh, season today not very pretty. So seasonal rainfall departure through the summer is really when we started to see drought move into the area. I'll point out that uh, in deep east Texas, we have some areas, I'll grab my pen tool here, we have some areas that I'm circling that are under extreme to exceptional drought. Lufkin, about seven inches behind on the season to date rainfall. That would be the summer rainfall. I would suspect that south and east of Lufkin, deficit is probably closer to maybe nine or ten inches. And then for the uh, Tyler area, close to seven inches on the rainfall deficit and then just over two and a quarter inch rainfall deficit in the Longview area. And that's why we've seen the drought expand so quickly over the summer and really start to expand north within the last couple weeks, even with the rain that we've had. Looking ahead, the Climate Prediction Center outlook for the month of September places East Texas in an area that's probably going to see below normal rainfall. And then as far as temperatures go for the month of September, above normal temperatures are expected. For the 1st of September, normal high and low, normal lows in the 70s and normal highs in the low to mid 90s. So above normal could be anywhere from from the mid to upper 90s on the uh, highs and mid 70s to upper 70s on those lows. So they are expecting above normal temperatures for the month of September for us. Now switching gears to look at the fall, which would be September, October, November, Climate Prediction Center still placing us in an area probably going to see above normal temperatures. But when it comes to the rainfall, got us in a neutral area, not really saying below normal rainfall, not saying above normal rainfall on the uh, fall outlook. But something that we're also kind of monitoring is that we are in El Nino right now. That is a climate uh, cycle, if you will, that happens in the Pacific Ocean. And typically what it means for us here in East Texas is a cooler and wetter winter. Now that's typical. There are exceptions to that. But this uh, image from uh, NOAA just kind of breaks down what the typical El Nino winter would look like for us. And you can see that, yes, they do have us in an area that typically would be wetter. Now I want to kind of 
transition here and look at a, a global what does El Nino mean for rainfall. I'm going to grab my pen tool here again and I'm going to circle kind of the southern United States. So southern United States are saying, hey, it's typically going to be wetter in El Nino. If you're in the Pacific Southwest or the desert Southwest, January to April going to be wetter for you. But kind of for the uh, Gulf Coast region, the uh, statistics, the data backs up that November to April typically going to be wetter. So we could start to see above normal rainfall maybe as early as November if this El Nino pans out as they typically do. Again, we sometimes have some exceptions to what is typical. Now, looking ahead then to the spring, which I don't want to get a little too ahead of myself, but sometimes people are, hey, you know, what, what does the summer mean about the fall and the winter? These are just kind of averages, not saying this is a forecast, but typically speaking, when you have an El Nino, and El Nino is going to be on the left here, fewer tornadoes and fewer hailstones or less hail, less severe hail and fewer tornadoes when it comes to storm season. You may be thinking, I thought you said El Nino means wetter. Well, it does. Statistically speaking, El Nino does mean it will be wetter, but it also means less stormy. So you may have the rumbles of thunder and the rain, but fewer tornadoes and less hail and wind damage with an El Nino severe weather season. So the opposite of that would be a La Nina severe weather season, which is what we were in last spring. And you can think back the spring before before that and the spring before that we had three springs where we were under La Nina and had multiple uh, severe weather events over the last couple years so now that we've transitioned into El Nino the data says hey it's gonna be wetter it's probably gonna be cooler for the winter but also looking ahead to the spring while it will still be wet it may not be as stormy you may not see as much severe weather so these are all things that we're watching as we go through the uh, days and weeks and even months ahead and continue to get closer to the uh, mid fall the late fall winter and then into the spring of course all things that we'll be watching and keep you updated on folks have a great weekend